Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Quilting Stars. I am so excited to be coming from AQS headquarters here in Quilt City, USA. That's Paducah, Kentucky, for some of you who don't know. And I'm going to be talking with my friend, the amazing quilt artist, Katie Pasquini Masipust. Katie, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great. We're enjoying a nice fall chilly day, so I'm in my element. Same here. It was the first day I had to put my hat and my gloves on to walk my dogs. Oh my goodness. So it is chilly. Very nice. I always, yes. I always like it for like a month and then I'm over it. <laughs> but it's nice right. when it first starts. Yes. Yes. And we're happy not to have all the smoke from the fires, but we're good. We're a sunny day. Good. Well, that's good to hear. Well, hey, yeah. you are going to show us around um, your space. I hear that you have two different studio rooms to show us, and I'm eager to see yes. what you have to uh, to give on your tour. Okay, I'm going to turn this little thing around and um, let you see as I come up the stairs from the lower level. There's Ziggy, my oh. little dog. He's following me from <laughs> room to room, huh, Ziggy? Hey, yeah, you that's fun Ziggy. boy. And um, this is one of my newer quilts as I come up to the top of the stairs based on a painting of mine. And so when I get to the top of the stairs, if I go to the left, I get, it's really kind of a guest room, but part of it is my painting space. So in this little dormer section, I have where I paint all my paints and all my brushes and all my stuff. And I have a nice view out the window and so I can paint in this sunny space. I and love it's also, that space. Yeah, I would I would yeah. be so fine with just sitting there by the light of the window with the plants and that would be a great yep. space for me too. So I can see how that works for you. Yep, and then I have a bed. So if I have company and I have my paintings on the wall and I have a um, nice Martelli table that I use in this side when, when this side isn't enough. So you go the, down the little hallway and my quilt studio. Um, it's got oh, my big table. I it's love lovely. my table. The light yeah. and the wood and the colors. It's, I mean, it looks so pretty and it's coming through crystal clear where I am. Oh, good. I'm glad it's coming through. So I have a pinup wall here. I'm going to talk about this quilt that I'm working on in a little bit once I give you the full tour. And then in this alcove is where my sewing machines are. So I have my Bernina sewing machine. Another project I'm working on is an artful log cabin based on a sunflower picture that I took when I was walking with my sister. And I just love the contrast of the colors. And then I have two sewing machines set up, one with monofilament thread, so I don't have to keep changing that. I have to and, stop you for a second and say, yep. I, I'm so amazed and intrigued by how you take that picture and you break it down into a log cabin. And I know that you teach that, um, but it's just, it's so unique and, and so different. You can see the log cabin pieces in there, the blocks, but it, it's going to make a pictorial quilt. And I think that's really, really cool. It's really fun. And I, I just love working log cabins and it's really fun, um, you know, to cut all the strips and I have them hanging here that I use next to the sewing machine. I did a um, eye quilt video on this, so mm -hmm. that's available through you guys. Oh, that's right, um, that's right. Yeah. Let, me t let me tell those people who are watching before we move on um, that on iQuilt.com, or I think there's a DVD of it on shopaqs.com, you can get that, uh, that class. And if you're an AQS member, you get 20% off of the class um, or the DVD or anything else on shopaqs.com. So if you're not a member, go ahead and join. You'll get that savings along with the AQ Magazine. Um, I think right now they're running a special where you get uh, for your $20 membership is for a year and then you get a $20 Shop AQS gift card with that and a free gift. So it's totally paying for itself and you can get that class. I did an article a couple months ago Go in the AQS magazine. I had my niece come and Marie Kondo all my drawers, and I am proud to say they still are all folded beautifully. So, you know, you never have to want to fold all these drawers again. So I keep them folded as I go. 
Oh, that looks gorgeous. I mean, it really does look like a photograph. And for those um, of you at home who haven't heard of the Marie Kondo system, I'm sure most of you have. Um, it, it's tell me if I'm right here, Katie. It's basically you're going to keep what keeps brings you joy, get rid of the rest of the stuff. And then she shows you how to like fold things and make things so that they're neat and your space is organized and you don't feel so overwhelmed with with clutter like I typically feel in my home. Exactly, exactly. And what brings me joy when we first started, she said, Do we, can we get rid of any of this fabric? And I'm like, no, it's all very important. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, after a couple of days of folding these drawers, anything that was difficult to fold, which my fabric can be, you know, cut into, you know, when you uh, pick certain areas or motifs, it can be. So we started uh, not throwing them out, but putting them in a basket to take to the quilt guild. And so that, that yeah. you know, Joy has a different meaning depending on how hard it is to be joyful. <laughs> That's exactly right. Depending on where you are in that organization pro project, uh, my husband gets on to me all the time when I'm trying to organize a room because he'll be like, well, you probably threw out something very important to me because you just throw stuff away. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I got to get rid of it. <laughs> I know. And, you know, so you just keep the really good stuff. So I'm going to show you what I'm working on right now. I started a new um, direction a new series. This is actually a painting that I did. I don't know how clear that's coming in. A painting that I did several years ago and it's just been hanging on my wall in my other room and I keep looking at it and loving it. And so I thought, well, why don't you make that into a quilt? So the first thing that I do is do a drawing of it. So I took a picture of it so that I could do a little acetate drawing of it. So I just drew all the shapes and then I got that back. I take it in and enlarge it to the full size. So I'm making it the same size as the painting. And I got this back and I was just, I, I was shocked. It was too many pieces. It was a mess. It was overwhelming. So one day while walking the dogs, I decided if I grid it, then I can do little blocks. So I gridded it out in five inch blocks to make it doable. Does that make sense? Wow. Yeah, it does. But you're right. It looks completely overwhelming when you look at that black and white sketch and <laughs> even breaking it out to me, I, I, would, I would be overwhelmed still. But the, the idea that you're able to break it down and make it happen is really exciting. And I can't wait to see what it looks like when it's finished. Um, oh, yeah. Because the painting itself, it, it's so fluid it, it you know, organic. It doesn't look like it has pieces that can be broken down, really. So it's really cool that you figured yeah. that out. Well, I did the grid and then I had a hard time finding my place on the painting. So I went and got, let's see if this even shows up, a piece of um, vinyl. And so I put the five inch grid. So now I can actually find where I'm working oh, wow. and translate it. So that was a neat little trick. So I've kind of, this is what I've gotten done so far. And when I got my blocks done, I realized that you couldn't tell where the grid was. So I added, ended up adding little strips. So to take you through this, first thing I do is I take my little block and I use Sulky Totally Stable. It's a heat sensitive tear away stabilizer. And so I draw where the placement of all the pieces are gonna be. Then I use the little paper patterns. You can see them here to cut out, use as templates, and turn all my edges. So all my edges are turned and they stick to the stabilizer. So those are turned and ready to stitch. Then I go to my sewing machine and with a little zigzag and monofilament thread, I zigzag, zigzag all the pieces down. And then you tear the paper off. So you tear most of the paper off, it comes off, you just tear it away and then I put it in backing and batting and quilt it. And I'm quilting, whoops, I'm quilting different patterns like circular patterns, horizontal, diagonal, and vertical. Yeah. And I, I also went. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I noticed that they were already quilted, which is really cool because then you're going to be able to use the, the, quilting as part of the whole piece as you build it and you're not going to have to try to fit that whole quilt on a smaller home machine if that's what you're working with yep 
So I work on my small Bernina. And so I'm doing it. It's like quilt as you go. Each little block is finished. Um, once I get it done, there's so many um, speckles of paint in the painting. Mm -hmm. So I'll go while I'm watching TV at night and I'm stitching a lot of the textures into it. So it's kind of fun to have a little handwork to do as well. And so this piece still needs the handwork, but I draw a line where I'm going to sew it and then sew the strip for the grid about a sixteenth of an inch away, press that open, and then when I sew it together, I get this little skinny line. So I actually get the grid. Oh, cool. Yeah, now you're going to have that little sashing all the way through and that's going to connect your pieces. Yep. Connects the pieces and then on the back, I cover the seam by hand so that the back's going to be finished. So when I get this, it's going to take a long time, but when I do get it finished, it'll be finished and I won't have to do, you know, quilt it or finish the backing or anything like that. That's right. Yeah, you're going each piece, you're going basically through the whole step of the quilt. So you're going to be completely yep. done when you're done. And you've explained it to us two minutes ago when you showed me that painting. I said, impossible. <laughs> There's no way to do that. <laughs> but it makes sense how you're doing it. And to put the handwork in, the details um, when it's done is just so cool and impressive and different. I've, I've always been yes. a fan of, of your work and how artistic it is. Oh. Thank you. Well, it's really good. It's portable, so I can take it downstairs. I went and sewed with a girlfriend for a week and took it with me there. I um, keep up the Marie Kondo organizing by, if I show you here, just the colors that I need for this quilt are pulled out and in these little drawers, folding each piece after I use it because you never want to have to fold the whole drawer again. <laughs> so that's sort of my portable movement you know, I can take it with me. Yeah, absolutely. What a great system. And yeah, I wouldn't fold them each time and then I'd have a whole pile. That's the problem yeah. with my laundry. In the, so. Yes, <laughs> similar to laundry, exactly. <laughs> well, so, so, so do you have, uh, this is kind of a broad question, but when you work on a piece, um, I, I can tell that you never really do one standard thing. You tend to do um, different ideas and for example you have a painting and now you want to make that into a quilt. Are, do you find that you're usually inspired by something or like a photograph that you did and now you want to create a quilt out of that or do you kind of go in um, just sort of blank like I'm going to make a quilt and here's how I'm going to start that quilt. Does, does that make sense? Yes it does. Um, I pretty much work in series so like all of my artful log cabins are basically a series so i start with a photograph so i just look to either go out and find a photograph that i go oh my gosh this would make a great artful log cabin mm -hmm. and save it in a file i've got a file in my computer or like as this painting that i was just explaining um i'm now going to get big canvas out and start painting more because i really like this so this is going to be the start of a good long series for me, playing with different color schemes. And this has a lot of circles that repeat as a motif. I might play with squares or lines or anything. So kind of two series I'm always working on. One's the Artful Log Cabin, because I like those for samples for the classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then something that's really my art, which a lot of times, I was a painter before I became a quilter. Okay. So now going back and really enjoying the painting part as well, and sometimes the paintings just get stretched and I sell them as paintings. And sometimes they're like, ooh, I got to make this into a quilt because that's my real love. <laughs> that's so cool. So yeah, I was going to ask if you started painting first or if you started quilting first. So I got that, that answer. Um, but yes. my, my other, it's not so much a question as an observation, but it'll be interesting to see now how your quilting um, it sort of informs your painting. So when you go back and you think, I'm going to make a quilt out of this, so I'm going to need to, to maybe uh, design this a different way that's going to make it easier when you actually go to do the, paint, the, the quilt itself, when you're building it, you're gonna be designing it and building it in your head. Exactly, and as I'm making this one, I'm going, oh my gosh, because I do, <laughs> when I'm painting, a lot of times I use water in a spray gun and I spray so that uh, it drips. Yeah. Well, I have way too many. <laughs> Too, dri too many drips on this, so I am thinking, okay, when you paint it next time, it might need to be a little drier That's or right. not so many fiddly little pieces, although the little tiny things, which I really like, like little checkerboards or little 
um, dots and things are really fun to do as the handwork. Because I was an embroiderer before I was a painter. So embroidery and then painting and then quilting. So now I'm kind of mixing them all together. So that that's, brings joy, as Marie Kondo would say. As she would say. <laughs> well, perfect. And it's really cool to, to know that you're mixing it all together. And what I like about embroidery is that you can just sit in front of the TV while you're watching a movie or something and kind of do that, exactly. you know, and so you're not necessarily hunched over the machine or you can you can try different things throughout the day so that's good and, and I hope that exactly. that inspires people who are watching uh, to kind of move it around mix it up a little bit if you're working on one thing yeah. and you're bored don't force yourself to do it because you're gonna hate it that's <laughs> if you if you force yourself to do it try something else right. and uh, you know let your inspiration take you yes exactly yeah if you force it it's gonna look that way so that's it should right. be, I always say, if it's not fun, I don't want to do it. So I always try to figure out a way to make it fun. Absolutely. I'm the exact same way. <laughs> Great. Well, well, thank you for showing us that. I loved seeing your process on that because, like I said, it's a sort of mind-blowing. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to show us before we say goodbye? Um, I, let me see. Did I show? Did I show you this piece on the wall here that was made? from a watercolor, this painting that I was showing you, the quilt that I was making was done with acrylic paint. This is done um, from watercolor, which was another, well, we might as well do another little ad here. Another video that I did for iQuilt was watercolor to quilt and shows different painting things, processes to do that can be made into quilts. This one was done using rubber cement so I um, dripped rubber cement in a sort of circular spiral pattern and let that dry and then painted with complementary colors of yellow and purple and um, then cropped it. It was bigger painting than this. And then with acetate, as I do all my quilts, I lay that over the painting and draw all the lines and marks and color changes. Let's see if I can get that to show up. I'll just show you the back of it. So it does look pretty scary when you just <laughs> see the lines. <laughs> but when you put it on the painting, you can see where the color changes are going to be. So then this gets enlarged. This little acetate piece gets enlarged to the full size. And then I just copy the colors and values from the painting. I really like the way this one turned oh, out. Oh yeah, I do too. That's stunning. I, and it, it looks like it radiates light with those whites and yellows. And hilarious to me that that was rubber cement because when you look at the yeah. painting, that's not what I would ever, ever have guessed when you look at the quilt. Right, right. So it's kind of fun. It's a fun thing for kids to do too, to, to put that rubber cement down, then paint. And then when it's uh, the paint's dry, to rub off and bring that white of the paper out is really cool. Absolutely. So that's a... Yeah, that's a fun one. Well, thank you so much. It's been so much fun to look around and, and see your work. And I'm gonna ask you one last question, which is for okay. those people who are at home stuck, I always try to um, give them some inspiration. If they're not sure what to make, or they're kind of in a little bit of a COVID-19 rut, which <laughs> I have been, uh, what would you say to folks who are, are wanting to maybe start sewing or start creating something new, but can't quite get there? Can't quite get there. Well, I found um, when I'm in a kind of a stressful situation or having a hard time, you can do anything for an hour. So mm -hmm. I set my timer for an hour and go up in the studio. And maybe it's an hour of arranging your fabrics or pulling colors for a color scheme that you haven't used. Or maybe it's an hour of sitting and looking through all your photographs to find something that inspires you. But you can do anything for an hour and then go do something like weed or garden or I don't know, go for a walk yeah. um, and then come back and do another hour. And I'd like to get a couple hours in a day, even if I'm feeling really blocked. So that's my recommendation. That's excellent advice. And that's advice that we haven't heard yet. Um, but setting that timer and knowing, okay, if I, if I hate every second of it, I'm going to get through it. And usually you don't hate it. Once you're into it, no. you're enjoying it. Yeah. And sometimes you'll go past that hour and keep going. Of and then course. you'll know the next day, oh, hey, I did that for an hour and I can make that hour of time, um, you know, no matter what else is going on. So I encourage you out there to try something for an hour. Set your timer for it and, and uh, try something yeah. new. Yep. Yeah. That's what I do. 
Well, thank you so much, Katie. It's been so much fun to talk to you and see your beautiful artistic space. I am loving all these quilts on your walls. They are just stunning. And um, you're always so nice to talk to and, and fun to talk to, and it's just been a joy. Well, I enjoyed it too, and I enjoyed getting my space all cleaned up and neat and tidy for you. And um, I hope everybody makes it through and we come out the other side and get to get together and quilt together again. That's right. I'm looking forward to when we can all be together again soon. And um, now you can enjoy that clean and tidy space. I love it when I have to clean up for somebody and then I get to sit and enjoy it after the fact. So and that's what I'm going to do. Yep. Well, everybody who's watching, be sure to like and share this video with your friends so that they can see it too. And then they can also see the other videos that we have um, in our Quilting On Together series, which are all on the AQS Facebook and the Quilt TV YouTube page. So once again, Katie, thank you so much. Give those puppy dogs a kiss for me. And okay. I hope to see you sooner than later. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks <laughs> Bye. so much.